Hey guys, so recently on my Evo X, I've been having some issues. So um, when I'm giving it gas, like wide open throttle, basically where the boost starts to kick in, it starts to hesitate. So the RPMs go up steadily and then drop and kind of hesitate and shoot back up. Um, it's just basically like, I noticed it had trouble accelerating. It was really weird. Um, and then also I was looking at my boost gauge that I got in my access port and I noticed that the boost was very, very low. So on a normal pull in like second or third gear where I get up to like 12, 15 PSI, it's been getting to like one to three. So I gotta really gas it to get up to past seven. Um, when I really, really gas it and do like a hard pull in like fourth, it'll get to like 15, 17. Normally the peak boost um, at full boost, you know, in like a third or fourth goal, uh, gear pull or a fifth gear pull, when I'm really uh, boosting, it'll get up to like 25, 26, 27, sometimes 28 PSI. So stopping at 17 is way below that. Um, so basically one of the things that I decided I'm gonna have to test to see what the issue is, is it's probably a boost leak from what I've read online. Um, now in order to test for a boost leak, it's pretty simple, but also there's a little bit to it. So I have to take off my intake right here. So you can see all the way down there, the turbo is underneath this heat shield behind the engine. So I'm gonna have to take off the intake. Um, maybe I have to take off the blow off valve because it's kind of in the way and it's attached to the intake. Um, and then directly to the inlet of the turbo, I'm going to have to att attach a boost leak tester. So I ordered this one from Torx Solution. Um, I know a lot of people make their own, uh, but I'm not that good at arts and crafts and this was like $20, so I just ordered one. Now this is for two and a half inch, so the, the coupler on there should fit the stock turbo. Um, and then also, you're gonna need an air compressor. So basically what you do is you hook up that to the inlet of the turbo, and then there, it's got a little uh, valve on there that you put the air compressor against, put some air into the system, and I'm gonna start with like five, 10 PSI and see if I hear anything. I probably will, because it's a pretty huge leak, um, but basically keep going until you reach peak boost if you need to, um, to hear and locate your leaks. So once we get some air in there, hopefully we should hear a, a leak somewhere. Um, I've checked the obvious things like my clamps and my uh, lines that you can see. I know a lot of people, this line comes up off for them, um, but that one's good for me. So I've checked all the clamps and lines that I can see um, that I've thought to check and I haven't found it. So it's probably going to be either at the blow off valve, the uh, boost control, or somewhere down there by the turbo. So hopefully once we find the leak, it's nothing too crazy and something we'll be able to fix um, relatively easy, but yeah. All right guys, so we did the boost leak test. Uh, it turns out that wasn't the issue. Um, I didn't have any leaks, which is good. Uh, then I went, and, uh, went ahead and replaced the fuel pump uh, relay because a lot of people said that's a common issue and that didn't change anything. So then people suggested I should check my spark plugs. So I pulled off four spark plugs. The gap was good. Uh, they weren't that jacked up. They looked like still in good shape. They've only been in there for about 10,000 miles, but people suggested I check them anyway. So then I ordered a new fuel pump. Uh, so the fuel pump was supposed to get here on Tuesday. Today is Saturday. So it got here a couple days ahead of schedule. So we decided that we're gonna slap in the fuel pump. Um, it's not really that simple. It's not, this is my first time working with a fuel pump. Uh, Kiefer, is this your first time doing a fuel pump? Uh, yeah, actually. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, we're just- It's quite a work in progress. Yeah, we're just figuring it out as we go. Um, we didn't really think about the fact that my gas tank was half full. So when we pulled off the fuel lines, fuel started leaking. So we uh, got this giant drip pan underneath here just in case any more fuel comes out. Um, had to jack the car up to get it under there. And uh, I, also fixed, I also fixed our floor jack today. So now I know how to do that. Uh, our floor jack was apparently low on hydraulic oil, so I filled that up. Had to do something on Leslie's car. Oh, Kiefer Skyline's over there. Let's see if you can see it. Yeah, I'll have to get some shots of your Skyline during the day because you can't really see it at night. But, um, but yeah, so this is where we're at right now. So this is the old fuel filter, which is disgusting. Um, Got the new one right here. New fuel filter nice going clean. in. That's a new pump, right? Yep. Got it in your hand over there. Yep, put the O-rings on. And then... Just put the O-rings on. And this is the stock pump, which we think is the issue with my car. I guess we'll find out once we put this new one in. Um, it's a DW65C. So it's like 250 LPH, I think. Uh, so it's a slight, I think it's a slight upgrade from the stock one, but it's similar enough that it's not gonna like over fuel me. I shouldn't have any big issues with it. 
um, but it's pretty much it's pretty similar to the stock one but it ran with this installation kit with the fuel filter it ran like 170 whereas i wanted a i was looking at getting a new stock fuel pump and they were in like the 300s i guess it's hard to find mitsubishi parts because they stopped making evos so yeah we're going to slap this fuel filter back or this fuel pump back in and pray that it fixes our issues my issues <laughs> and uh and if it doesn't then i guess we'll just try something else hey guys so the new fuel pump is in uh shout out to Kiefer; he helped me put it in um it runs good the fuel pump works uh the only thing is i don't know if this is normal but when i go to start it up it cranks for a while like before it finally starts up i think it's just because it's getting used to the like the new fuel pump uh, the lines have to fill up and stuff um but i'm hoping that's just normal um but driving it it feels way better the car's not bogging down as much it's getting off the line uh way faster than it was but uh it's definitely still doing the issue when i go to when i go to rev the rpms go up kind of slow and then if i really punch it they shoot up and drop back down and it's under boosting by a lot um the boost is like i just floored it in fourth uh down the road and or in third excuse me and normally i'd be at like 15 psi around there and i was getting like three so it's definitely still under boosting it's definitely still feels kind of boggy um so we didn't fix the issue but it definitely feels better with the new fuel pump and the new filter um there's keeper skyline um so yeah i don't know uh now i've got a better fuel pump so at least i got a new fuel pump and new fuel uh filter in there that's a that's a plus another plus is now i know how to change um fuel pumps in the evo but we haven't fixed the issue so i'm back to the drawing board um it's not spark plug it's not a boost leak it's not the fuel pump it's not the fuel pump relay it's not the fuel filter so next thing i might look at is cleaning the math housing or possibly replacing the MAF sensor. I'm gonna have to look into that, um, see what that is all about. I really wanna install my uh, air fuel gauge. I'm gonna put it right up here in this pillar pod, right up here, the closest one, and then put the boost down here. I don't know how much work it takes to install the, the fuel uh, air, air fuel gauge, um, but I've had it in my closet for like two years. So I should probably put that in. Um, that way I could actually get a reading on if I'm lean or not. I don't think I'm running lean because the the plugs looked fine. They had some black on them, but they weren't white or anything like that. Um, but basically just still trying to work through this problem. Um, but yeah, I'll keep you guys updated. Hey guys, so I'm here in my Evo. Um, the fuel pump install went pretty good. I can't remember if I showed it on video when it was actually installed. I'm pretty sure I did. Um, the only issue I have with the fuel pump now, I, I'm pretty sure this is related to the fuel pump because it's only been happening since I started it, is I tried to crank on my key like normal and it would just burp, 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 and then I'd have to do it a couple times and it finally started. So at first I thought the new fuel pump was bad and I was panicking. Um, but a lot of people said it's common. I just have to let the fuel pump prime. So basically I turn it to run and then just wait a couple seconds and then start it up. So you can see there I took two cranks. Um, but it still started way faster than it did when I didn't let it sit like that. Maybe I didn't let it sit quite long enough there, I'm not sure. Um, but usually when I let it sit for a little bit like that to let the fuel pump kind of uh, prime and kick on or whatever, uh, it only takes one crank and it starts up. Um, but you could hear how the first time it didn't work. It was this morning, I didn't let it sit at all. I just tried cranking it on because I didn't know uh, that that's a good idea to let it sit like that with the new fuel pump. Um, and th this isn't the first time I turn on the car. I've had the fuel pump in for like two days now. So uh, every time I turn it on now, I gotta let it sit for a little bit uh, with the key and run before I try turning it on the rest of the way. Otherwise, it'll just keep cranking um, and it'll be a really rough start. So today when I was driving around the Evo, um, I'm still having the issue, you know, I'm under boosting by a lot. Uh, it feels sluggish, it's hesitating in the when I try to gas it. When I gas it, it almost doesn't wanna go. Um, and the the boost is just not there. Um, I just feel like I have no power in the car. It just feels awful. Um, you guys probably know by this point in the video, but I did a boost leak test. It wasn't a boost leak. Um, I checked. I replaced the fuel pump relay. I replaced replaced the fuel pump. I uh, replaced my filter on my intake just because I was dirty, and I figured that might help the car run a little bit better too. Um, I replaced the filter on my fuel pump. Um, I 
pulled out my spark plugs, I checked the gap, all the gaps were perfect. Still, um, the spark plugs weren't white or anything, which people said they might be if it's running lean. Um, they were just a little black from, uh, my car usually runs pretty rich, uh, but they weren't burnt or anything, they weren't burnt out, so I put the spark plugs back in. So it's not the spark plugs. Um, so a lot of people have suggested that it might be the MAF, the mass airflow sensor. Uh, they said it might be dirty, I might need to try cleaning it, because um, a lot of the symptoms of my car is happening having uh, are related to that or it might need replaced if cleaning it doesn't work so I'm gonna try cleaning it I got my can up there I'm gonna try to do that right now um, I've never cleaned the math sensor before but I just watched a YouTube video real quick and it's pretty simple uh, it's just a matter of I need to see how exactly I get it out um, out of my intake hopefully I don't have to pull out the whole intake but we'll see um, and then if cleaning it doesn't work my next step might be to replace it uh, I've seen the one from Mitsubishi online goes for like $400, which is probably what the dealership would sell it to me for, which is crazy. Um, but I have seen on Rock Auto, they've got the exact same one, uh, but refurbished for like 100. So I'm gonna browse, do some more research, browse on the internet, but that might be what I end up going with. Hopefully it's not a crappy sensor. Hopefully it's uh, equal quality to buying a new one, but I don't have $400 to drop on a math sensor. Uh, so I'm gonna try the $100 one if I need to replace it. Hopefully I clean my math sensor right now and all my problems are fixed. But I'm not too hopeful because everything I've tried so far, nothing's fixed the car. Um, and then after that, I'm gonna be trying to test or maybe just replace it. There's no way to test the blow-off valve because I've got the stock blow-off valve on here, the recirculating one. Um, I have a tile recirculating blow-off valve that I have in my closet with all my other parts I've been building up. And I wanna slap that on uh, but I'm pretty, even though they're both recirculating, I'm pretty sure because the tile uh, works differently than the stock one. It's got like a lighter spring is what I was reading. I might need to get it tuned if I put that on and I don't have the money for a tune right now. Uh, and my tuner is in Wilmington, which is an hour away. So I really want to put on all my bolt-ons before I get it tuned. Put on all my bolt-ons all at once and then get it tuned. And that way I only have to get it tuned, you know, once for my bolt on instead of tuning for just the blow off valve and then tuning for everything else in the future. Cause I just don't have the money to keep going back and dynoing my car. Cause they charge uh, around 500 for a dyno tune. So I just don't have that kind of money. Um, but it might be the blow off valve. And then last but not least, it might be the turbo. So hopefully it's not, but I'm going to try everything else before I look at the turbo. Uh, just because that's probably the biggest purchase and hopefully my clutch isn't slipping because it felt like my clutch was slipping today um, I had really gas it to get out of to get out of uh, to get going and it felt like it was really easy to shift Like I barely had to press down the clutch But I'm hoping that's just related to my car bogging down and being crappy from whatever issue it has I'm hoping my clutch is good. I replaced my clutch around 40,000 miles. I'm at 68 right now. It's a stock clutch. That I replaced the stock one with uh, it's a new stock clutch. So 28,000 miles, I'm hoping I didn't crap out my clutch already. I definitely don't have clutch money. If my clutch and my turbo go at the same time, I'm really screwed. Um, you guys probably know this, but this car is my daily driver. And I'll, I can't, my wife's got the Lancer, but I can't drive her car every day because she goes to work every day. So I will really be stuck if my clutch and my turbo go out, but we'll just have to figure it out. So hopefully that's, that's worst case scenario. But hopefully I'm going to clean the sensor right now and all my problems will be fixed. So we're about to do that. Alright guys, so the MAF sensor is located right here um, on my intake. Here's the new filter I put in, by the way. It's a uh, K&N, three and a half inch. I'm pretty sure I showed that in the video. Uh, it's got a little bit of a extra, it's a little bit too big, but I tightened on this clamp and it seems to be on there really securely. Um, but here's the MAF sensor. So I went on ahead and unplugged it right here. And there's two bolts, one right here and one right back here that seem to be this size hex screw. So I'm gonna see if I can get that off with this. Um, so hopefully I don't have to remove this whole thing uh, off of there. All right guys, so I removed those two bolts uh, and I got out the mass sensor, which is right here. Um, the only issue was it got a little bit of blaster on it that I used for those bolts to come out, but it doesn't look like any of it got on the wire um, or in there. It looks like it kind of just got here on the edges, so I wiped it off. As fast as I could because I didn't want anything to get on there because or down in there because they said nothing should get on there except for the uh, math cleaner itself now the math cleaner straw did not want to go in the can so I chopped off the end of it and squished it a little bit and it appears to be 
in the can now. So I'm going to fire it. These are the two little screws. Um, they're pretty rusted. The heads of them are pretty rusted. So the thread's still good though. Um, this is the size that ended up working uh, to get them off. I had to stick it in there and use some pliers to turn. Um, I made sure to spray it with the blaster first just so I didn't snap off the uh, snap it off because I've done that before with a ton of different bolts and it's super frustrating. Um, I'm not sure what size uh, hex key that was because it wasn't part of my sets. You can see my sets right here. Um, none of these seem to fit it perfectly. So it was like a, a random one that I had sitting in here. Um, it was just chilling in here by itself, kind of like this one. And funnily enough, it's the same one. It's the same one that uh, fit for getting off my uh, quick release steering wheel. No, none of my hex keys would fit except for this one, and I'm not sure what the size is. It's pretty small though, but it was the only one that fit these bolts, so I got them off. So I have this here now. I'm going to attempt to spray it with this and hopefully get it kind of clean. off here but I'm gonna try to spray that wire and just kind of spray all over um, the one thing I was told is not to spray in here too much so I'm gonna to attempt to hold that so it doesn't get stuff in it Now, a lot of people are saying it could be a dirty sensor, um, so that's why I'm cleaning it. But to be honest with you, it doesn't look very dirty to me. I mean, maybe the thing that's causing the issue is small enough that you can't really see it. But just looking at it now, it doesn't look very dirty. All the dirt was kind of on the top part. So that's kind of, you know, getting my hopes down a little bit, thinking this might not be the issue. Now I basically soaked it in the cleaner. Um, made sure to get in that wire really good, the hot wire there. And, uh, you know, did my best not to get it in the uh, electrical board there where it connects. So, kept that pretty dry. Made sure to get this wire really nice and good. Um, so now I'm just going to set it here to dry. And I'll come back in about 30 minutes. Check on its status, see how dry it is. Um, and hopefully it'll be cleaned and I can put it back in and my car will work like new. Um, if not, then I might try to replace the sensor. And then next will be the blow valve and hopefully not the turbo <laughs> all right all right guys i'm going to reinstall my math sensor it's now all dried out and all clean hopefully so we're going to put it back in see if any change this blow valve tube is kind of in the way pop it down in like that 
line up the screws. This one's pretty straightforward and easy to put in. The other one's kind of down below the wall valve tube, so it's kind of a pain to get to. All right, so I've gotten these two screws tightened down pretty much all the way. Math, filled, math uh, sensors back in place. Uh, just gotta get the plug here, plug it back in. Uh, that plug was pretty hard to get off. Um, it was pretty stuck on there and corroded because I've never pulled this off. Uh, but now the math sensor is back in place, so we're gonna see if it changed it at all. And if it runs any better. Hopefully it does. Alright guys, so we just took it for a quick spin and uh, after cleaning the MAF sensor and it didn't feel any different. It felt the same as before I cleaned it. Uh, and then just for a hoot, I unplugged the MAF sensor and took it for a spin and it uh, felt the same still. So I'm gonna buy a little altometer or voltometer or whatever and uh, I saw a video on how to test the MAF sensor. So that'll probably be a good uh, tiny investment just to test out before I buy a new one to see if it is the issue or not. So it's probably either the MAF sensor, the blow valve, the wastegate, which I think it's, uh, I think the stock turbo is a wastegate. I mean, I think it would, I think it has to. Um, and then the turbo. So those are probably the next things I'll be looking at. Hey guys, so today I got the transmission fluid and the uh, transfer case fluid changed out in my Evo. Um, I also got an oil change while I was at it. So it's got uh, brand new oil. So it's got brand new oil and brand new fluids in the drivetrain. Um, I did the Redline cocktail transmission fluid and I just did the OEM fluids for the uh, uh, transfer case. So um, the only thing that the uh, dealership said is that when they pulled my plug from my transmission there were some metal shavings in there um, they showed me a picture of it it wasn't a lot but you know any metal in there is kind of bad I'm hoping it's just from like whenever I've grinded the gears um, when I was learning to drive because I've never changed the fluid in my transmission until now um, and then they also cleaned my car for me so you know that's nice because the Evo was disgusting and really needed to be washed um, so now real quick what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to try, because I've been chasing this problem trying to figure out what's wrong with my car. Oh, by the way, after I got the fluids changed, um, the car definitely shifted a lot smoother. It felt great, but I still had the issue with the, you know, the under boosting, like the same lack of power, the same problem I've been having. Um, I had a buddy on Instagram tell me I should try taking off my heat shield and uh, turning the actuator bar um, a couple turns, shortening it because uh, he said that might help um, with the under boosting. So I'm gonna give that a go and try it out. It's worth a shot um, since I'm trying basically everything, trying to see what'll fix my car. And that's something that doesn't require buying anything. So um, I'm gonna give it a go. And I'm, I don't know if it'll work or not, but I'm gonna try it out. I'm gonna turn it like three times and then see how the car drives. And then I might have to tighten it or loosen it from there. So we're gonna see what happens. I've actually never taken the heat shield off of my turbo before um, because until this problem started I never really messed around in the engine bay too much. Now my engine bay is looking way cleaner than usual and that's just because I've actually been in here working on the car so much recently I've just been kind of cleaning stuff as I go. Um, and it's kind of a great feeling to have a clean engine bay so I think I'm going to clean it more regularly from now on. But basically back here, I don't know how well you can see it but there's the heat shield, there's just a few bolts I got to take off pull the heat shield off and then I should be able to get that actuator bar. So we're gonna see how that goes. All right guys, the heat shield is out. Um, it has five bolts on it, in case you guys don't know. Uh, one, two, three, all the way down there, four, and then five. That one and these two are really easy to get to. That one is a little bit harder. This one's kind of harder just because uh, that little heat shield back there is kind of in the way, which I guess I could have taken out, but I didn't really feel like it. Um, I guess if you if you take out the strut bar, it'd probably be easier to get the heat shield out also. I kind of bent it a little bit up on the right side. So I'm hoping I can pretty, when I go to put it back on, I can pretty easily line up the holes again. Cause I can picture that being kind of pain, kind of a pain to 
line that hole back up where it goes in right here because I kind of took it out now the thing that he's talking about I thought it was up here somewhere um, but it's actually way down here by the turbo so right here this is the pin that I need to remove and right here next to it I don't know how well you can see that there's a bolt right there I need to break loose and then I need to pull this pin out and then this is the part that comes off the turbo and turns um, so yeah hopefully I, it's kind of hard to reach down in there I keep scraping my arm on this part right here reaching down in there behind the engine um, but we're gonna attempt to do this and see how difficult it is I just need to turn it two or three turns and then slap the heat shield back on and hopefully everything works so yeah all right guys so um, the arm was on there or the uh, actuator rod or whatever was on there pretty tight it was super hard to get off um, and then when I went to go loosen it up I wasn't really able to turn it I think it was already as tight as possible I don't think it loosened up over time like uh, that was a theory that I was hoping for so I tightened it I loosened it I got it back to about where it was at uh, maybe it's slightly tighter but I just drove the car I didn't notice any change I felt the same, so unfortunately it looks like another dead end, unless I just, uh, unless I just, because I tried to tighten it like three turns, but it just would not go on, it was too short, so I had to loosen it back to about where it was at. So I think it, that wasn't the issue, it was already loose. Um, I do have some smoke coming out, I don't know if you can see that, but there's some smoke coming out that I noticed when I pulled up into the uh, garage. But I think that's just from the uh, the blaster that I used to loosen up the bolts. I think some of it dripped onto the downpipe, and uh, that's what's burning. Um, because it doesn't smell like anything. It doesn't smell like anything like the turbo's burning or anything. So. Um, also, these bolts on the heat shield. Uh, I got these two back on, but then the three down here that I showed you guys one, two, and three, I was literally not able to get the bolts back on. Um, I don't know if I bent the heat shield or it just doesn't line up or it's just super hard to line it up, but I just wasn't able to get the th those three bolts to line up. So I was like fishing around with the bolt through the hole and I couldn't find the threads to screw them in. But with these two on top here, the heat shield looks like it still stays in the same position. So, yeah. Um, yeah, so I guess we're going to try something else. Uh, next thing I'm going to look at is probably the blowout valve. Hello everybody, this is Race Getting Out of Nate, also known as David. So, I have finally figured out what's wrong with my car. Um, if you guys follow my Instagram, I've been updating that a lot. Uh, but I realized I haven't made an update to my YouTube video. So, the issue with my car was actually the clutch. Um, at least that was the issue that was causing it to drive weird, accelerate weird, felt like it had no power, uh, the fluctuation um, in RPMs, all that was linked to the clutch. My clutch was completely burnt out. <coughs> um, it was a stock clutch that I had put on at 40,000 miles, and now I'm, I was at 68,000 when it burned out. So, you know, that stock clutch lasted me a good 28,000 miles. Um, So yeah, I got a uh, ACT uh, HDSS clutch and ACT screen light flywheel. So yesterday I was talking about my clutch and then my compressor came on from my bags and cut me off. So I had to record a second part of the video, which then I accidentally deleted when I uploaded it to my computer. So I'm on my way to work right now. Um, so just to quickly recap what you guys missed because the video got deleted. Um, I got an ACT HDSS clutch put in and an ACT Streetlight flywheel. Um, I had the shop put it in because I've never attempted to put a clutch in myself. 
I didn't really feel like uh, messing around with it. Um, and now the car is super smooth. Um, it resolved most of my issues. Obviously, it's very touchy stop and go, but that's just because it's a brand new clutch. Um, so I'm still kind of breaking it in. Uh, I'm still under boosting a little bit. I'm going up to like 13, 14 pounds of boost at the most instead of uh, the 20, 25, 26 that I'm used to. Um, I'm not totally sure why, but the car is running smooth for now. It's running fine. So I'm just going to save up and get the rest of my bolt-ons. Um, and then after I have all my bolt-ons, get some things powder coated and get them all put on and get it tuned and then see where we're at. Uh, the only thing I might do in between that is get my all wheel drive pump changed out the dealership hopefully. Um, so that's kind of going out. Uh, get the rear bumper mounted a little bit nicer. I might put this stock crash bar in there and have them cut it to size and mount the bumper perfectly because right now it sticks out on the right side. Um, and then I might put in my pressure gauges for my bags and then get an alignment done. So that's really it. Um, those are really all my, you know, near future plans for the Evo. So yeah, saving up for these bolt-ons is really gonna be the next thing.